everybody, my name is Stephanie, and I'm an educator with the San Diego River Park Foundation. Each year, our organization provides free, hands-on environmental education field trips to thousands of kids from San Diego. Most of our students typically come to learn about river ecology with us at preserves in the city closer to their schools, like Mission Trails, Mission Valley Preserve, or at the river mouth by Dog Beach. But sometimes, lucky students get to visit the river in our preserves at the river headwaters near Julian, Alpine, and Descanso. This is where I am today. Why don't you come join me? Today we're going to conduct a bioassessment, which is a survey of living things. We're going to be looking at aquatic organisms, which means critters that live in the water. Scientists conduct bioassessment in order to determine the health of a particular ecosystem. So, are you ready to become a field scientist for the day? Do you know if you live near the San Diego River? It's okay if you don't know yet. A lot of the kids that come to our field trips at first aren't sure if they've been to the San Diego River before. Have you ever seen flooding near Passion Valley Mall? Or have you been to Mission Trails? If so, then you probably have been to the San Diego River before, and you just didn't know it. Our river runs 52 miles from the headwaters in Julian and the mountains down to the mouth of the river by Dog Beach. If you've been to the river before, picture your favorite place. Well, today I'll show you one of my favorite places, Boulder Creek Preserve. All of these communities that the river passes through are connected by it and the watershed. There's about half a million people that live within the San Diego River watershed. And I bet if you're watching this, you're probably one of them. Have you ever heard of the word watershed before? Let me teach you a quick trick to remember what this word means. Cup your hands like this together and now imagine that your thumbs are the mountains and where your hands meet is the river. In this mini watershed, water from the mountains will flow down from your thumb mountain into your river and pass your pinkies to the ocean. A watershed is an area of land where all the water will run off or shed into one body of water like a river flowing to the ocean. Now, the San Diego River watershed is way bigger than our little hands. It is hundreds of square miles from way up here in the mountains all the way to the beach. We all live in a watershed and so our behaviors on the land will affect the river and the ocean. You can tell a lot about how healthy an ecosystem is by looking at what's living in it. The bioassessment we will conduct today will help us determine the water quality of this stream. Today, we are at a cold water creek called Boulder Creek in the San Diego River headwaters up in the mountains where the water is more pristine and colder than other parts of the watershed in the city, like in Mission Valley, for example. Here in the upper river, what do you notice around me? Lots of trees, plants, and fewer disturbances. That means fewer roads, fewer houses, less people, less pollution, and less trash. All of this makes this location an excellent site to collect samples and compare to what we are used to find in the lower, more urban San Diego River, so we can compare the health. What do you expect to find? Will this sample reveal that the stream is healthier, or do you think the stream in the city is healthier? What makes you think that? Pause this video and talk through your hypothesis with someone, or write it down on your worksheet. Here we go. Let's get in the river and see what we can find. After this, stay tuned for a video of a bioassessment conducted in the lower river and see how these two samples compare. What we are going to be looking for here are aquatic, benthic, macro, and vertebrates. That's a mouthful. Let's break it down. Aquatic means water. Benthic means bottom. Macro means that they're big enough for us to see with our naked eye. And vertebrate means that they have no backbone. So use your hand to touch the bones on the back of your neck. That is your vertebra, because you are a vertebrate animal, like other mammals, birds, amphibians, and fish. The animals we're looking for here don't have that. Now let's put it all together. Aquatic, benthic, macro, and vertebrate. These vertebrates are like health thermometers or bioindicators that tell us if the water conditions in this spot are either poor, moderate, or good. 
Some of them are very sensitive to pollution and others are more tolerant of it. Some of them require greater levels of dissolved oxygen or available oxygen in the water to survive. Dissolved oxygen levels vary based on the conditions of the river. These river bugs spend most of their life in a very small area and they are very mobile. This makes them good indicators of the health right in this location. Plus, it makes them easier to catch. Note that it is important to know what is present and what is absent in the river. First, I need to get into my waders so that I stay dry, grab my D-net, my bucket, and my pitcher. Okay, let's see. They don't make these for short people, but that's okay. Science isn't always glamorous. To conduct our bioassessment today and catch river bugs, I'm going to use my D-net. You see, it is D-shaped so that we can hold it flat to the bottom of the water. Remember, we're looking for benthic bugs. Bugs don't live in the bottom of the water, but we want to let the water pass through. So this net has tiny holes in it, so the water passes through and bigger things like those invertebrates we're looking for get caught. All right, so let's collect a little bit of water so that we can keep our animals alive. All right, let's bring that there. Let's grab our net and let's get in the water. consistent surveys so that we can compare our data. We consistently sample for 15 seconds. Can you help me out at home by counting to 15? I'll count in Spanish. You count in English, Spanish, whatever language you know. Ready? Go. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez, all right, so what was I doing down there? I was disturbing the bottom so that I can release some of those little insects and catch them in my net. Let's see what we got. Flip this over. Rinse them out. The water feels nice and cool. Do that again. Perfect. Yep, I can already see some little critters in here. Let's take it to that insect investigation station and take a little closer look. Looking at what we find is the best part of field biology. As I mentioned before, the type of river bugs we find will tell us the quality of the water right here. Our job is to identify to the best of our ability the different species found in our sample or species diversity and how many of each kind we have or how abundant each of these species are. My son Niam is here and he is going to help us look for some invertebrates. So once we pour the water in here, we're going to have to let it set, settle down for a little bit. And we're going to start looking for things that are moving. Do you see anything moving in the water other than plant matter? Um, oh, I see that little insect on this one. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah. I know that. Yeah? yeah? All right. Name. So what we're going to do is going to wait until this settles and then we'll look for things that are moving. How about that little guy? So we we'll use a pipette to suck all these little insects out. There's so many animals. There are. And then we put them in a drop of water so we can look at them closely with this scope and we can see them here on our camera. How do you use it? So that's a good question. So the way that you use a pipette is by holding it down, you press on the bubble on the bottom and then sucks up the air. So then you insert the pipette and then you look for your insect and then let go a little bit and that should suck it up. Oh, 
It sucked just a little bit of water. Oh, see how it sucked up? Yeah. So now one way that we're going to look at this guy is by squeezing it into a droplet of water in this little petri dishes. So we isolate them so we can take a better look. Whoop! This guy's the one to come out now. He's so big. There we go. So now we're going to isolate this guy into a smaller droplet of water. There we go, perfect. So we're gonna set it down over here. I and see. we're gonna look at this with the dinoscope. So that's a good try. So the way that you use the pipette, you hold it up, you squeeze the little bubble, and that takes the air out. And then you insert the pipette in, and then you let go, and then that sucks up whatever you're looking for. I see him. His butt's moving. You do? Oh, look at that. Yes. He is moving for sure. Look at this little guy. Can we take a picture? We can take a picture, right. This little guy is a mayfly nymph. Nymph is a word that means this is not yet mature. So a mayfly nymph is like a mayfly baby. Please, it's very squirmy. Oh, I got you. I can't get one. It's okay, it takes a little practice. The kids on our field trips that also needs a lot little practice too. But they get bigger, they get better and better. Oh, wonderful job. I think you got a mayfly. It's so, a mayfly, yeah. It's a mayfly? Let's take a look. It's very squirmy for sure. Yeah, it was hard to get. It was hard to get, but you did it. Okay, come on. Oh, there we go. They're all in bubbles. All right, let's look at him. Under the scope. Yeah, it's oh, not, it's, look at this guy. It's another one. Yeah. Yeah. Same look at that. Let's take a picture of this guy. Here is another mayfly nymph. You probably hear the word fly in the name mayfly. That's because when this little guy grows into an adult, it will grow wings and curl out of the water to fly in the air. But mayflies spend up to two years as nymphs living in the stream. Yeah, that's an exoskeleton. Oh yeah, look at that. That's the exoskeleton of a mayfly. Let's put him on a little bubble so we can see him better. <laughs> All right, you ready? Oh, look at that. Whoa, see, like that is the exoskeleton. As a mayfly grows, its skin doesn't stretch like ours, so it sheds its exoskeleton and grows a new one, which is called molting. This is also what happens when it grows wings and becomes an adult. Some things are so tiny, but once we look under the scope... Got him! You got one? Alright, can you, you put it on guy. this petri dish? Oh yeah, that's a big guy! You can get him on the pipette. There, you gotta squirt him out. Yeah. Do you want to drive in my, the scope? Yes. All right. Oh, look, it's, it's leaving. <laughs> He's escaping. There we go. Oh, look, there he is again. Look at this damselfly nymph. It has a long slender body, just like the adult damselfly it will grow into. Maybe you have seen an adult damselfly somewhere before. They like to live near rivers and lakes with fresh water. Oh, look at this guy. Oh, this is the guy that I found earlier and I thought it was huge. I'm going to need a new one. Hang on. All right, there we go. Let's move oh, this guy over here. That guy is enormous. Let's see what he is. Oh. My goodness, this guy is so got, big. You got a mayfly. He was, he was looking right at me. Yeah. Like he wanted to take a picture. Come and look over here, Niam. Look at that guy. Niam, look. This one is an aquatic worm. They eat detritus, which just means that they'll eat just about any leaf or dead thing laying on the bottom of the stream. 
Its digestive tract is visible here. See that tube inside his body? Yeah, it's gonna be almost too big for us to put him under the scope. Maybe that's why. Yeah, that's why, yeah. Let's see if we can get him. Whoops. <laughs> He's chasing this guy. <laughs> oh, there it is. I got it. <laughs> On the outside, but that's okay. He's actually too big. You have your pipette? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, let's see. You want to do it? Okay. Don't squish his tail. Oh, that's a good one. Right there. A stonefly! Cool! This is really special to see. This one is a nymph too. Do you remember what nymph means? A nymph is a stonefly baby. Stonefly nymphs are very sensitive to pollution and only live in clean water. So seeing this one here is a really good sign for the creek. So one of the things that we do in our field trips is we look at all of these species and we try to identify them. Come look. So, what does this bioassessment tell us? Well, scientists know a lot about how tolerant these little invertebrates are to pollution. That means we know that certain species, like stoneflies and caddisflies, need really healthy, clean water to survive. Other species, like leeches, can survive even when the water is polluted. Can you spot the species we found today on this chart? We found lots of mayfly nymphs, stonefly nymphs, damselfly nymphs, and an aquatic worm. We have riverbugs from all over the chart in our sample. Whenever we see any of the species from the top of the chart in our sample, that tell us that this creek has good water quality. Are you surprised? Was your hypothesis from a few minutes ago correct? So do you think this um, creek over here, our Boulder Creek, is a healthy river? Yeah. Yeah. I think so, based on who lives in here. So let's put all of these guys back and return them to the creek. Excuse me. <laughs> let's put them back. Oh. You're putting them back? Yeah, let's return them back to the creek so they can become part of our food chain. Thanks, everyone. I look forward to seeing you on one of our Riverbox Our Cool Field Trips in the future. Bye.